Live from the Northeast Georgia Business Radio X studio, this is Northeast Georgia Business Radio. Welcome, folks. Welcome back to Northeast Georgia Business Radio. I'm your host, Tom Sheldon. We are re- we are recording. We are broadcasting live from the Empower College and Career Center of Jackson County. I always mess that up. With me today is my good buddy, Mike Salmon. He's out running the board. He's waving. Hey, Mike. Good to see you, sir. I have with me a very special guest today, though. Uh, I, I say she is one of the nicest people in Jackson County, and I'm going to hold hold her to that because I'm I'm a firm believer. No pressure there. No pressure. I have with me Tracy Bledsoe of Peace Place Incorporated. Tracy, how are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm well. Thank you for having me today. Peace Place Incorporated. That's a nonprofit. Correct. And what do, what exactly do you specialize in? So Peace Place is a domestic violence agency. Okay. Um, we serve Barrow Banks and Jackson counties. We provide emergency safe shelter uh, for women and children who are fleeing from abusive homes. Gotcha. And we have a whole host of other supportive services to go along with that as well. Nice, nice. And it, it, you just mentioned it's right here in town. Uh, I want to know a little bit about Tracy, though. I mean, we'll get into all the great stuff that, that you and Peace Place do. A little bit about you. How did you make it to Jackson County? Ah, well. Um, it wasn't supposed to be a trick question. <laughs> I have been in Jackson County for over 20 years now. Um, You're almost grandfathered in. Almost I'm in the same boat. In, right? I'm almost grandfathered yeah, in. not quite. Um, I'm originally from Savannah. Nice. Um, graduated Love from, Savannah. Yeah. Love Savannah. Beautiful. It's a great place to call home. Yeah, it is. Um, I graduated from the University of Georgia, um, Go dogs. undergrad and law school, um, and uh, ended up um, in in Jefferson of all places, the big bustling city. Uh, that's right. That's right. I was practicing law um, in Savannah, and um, my husband was an attorney uh, in Jefferson, and we ended up up here. You're here. Uh, I'm here. So you are an attorney. I am indeed. You are a very accomplished person. That shouldn't be understated. Well, I, I don't know about that, but thank well, you. Well, I, I, would, I would say that. I just want the folks to realize you did, didn't just show up one day and, and start running a nonprofit. Cause well, that's true. Because there's a lot more that's, to it than that. That's very true. That's very true. That shouldn't be undersold. I'm sorry. Just uh, in, in, interjecting my opinion. I'm sorry. But, okay, back to Peace Place. Women and children, I guess, what? Fractured families, women fleeing abusive situations. That's correct. That's correct. That 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 that, that can be some emotional stuff. Um, always, um, all of the women and children who come into our programs are in the middle of trauma. Um, it, you know, it goes without saying. Um, many of them come with nothing but the clothes on their backs. Um, they I are. I was truly, about to ask you. Yes, they are truly fleeing for their lives. I, I got to believe oftentimes when, when they are fleeing, it's not really planned out. You know, Thursday at 3, I'm going to, I bet it's survival. That's right. That's I don't want right. to say spur of the moment, but when you're trying to save yourself or your kids, it's mm, spur of the moment. Most of the time. Um, That's horrible. It, it is. It is. It's um it's terrifying. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. That's and, the right word. I'm sorry. Right. And in Still that horrible. moment, yeah, yeah. when a woman makes that decision to leave, that is the most dangerous time for her when she's trying to get out. Um, part of our service, we operate a 24-7 crisis hotline. And so uh, victims call, you know, all the time, um, whether it whether they're seeking shelter or they just need some support, if they just need to talk, maybe they're not quite ready to leave they yet. They have questions. They have questions. That's right. And a lot of times that question is, how do I get out of here? Right. So safety planning is a big part of what we do. Um, that advocate who answers that call will walk through the whole process with her and try to help her make a plan of how she can get out of that home safely. Um, and, and get to us or get to wherever she wherever she needs to go. You know, she may not need to come to our shelter. Maybe she has family. Maybe she has friends someplace right. else to go. But getting out of that home is is very dangerous, and it has to be planned out. 
um, you know, as, as, as best as possible. Um, you know, it's, we try to tell women, it can be men sometimes too. I sure. don't mean to, to stereotype, but, um, you know, more likely than not, it's, it's women who are, are mm-hmm. calling, um, us and it's just easier for conversational purposes, but well, sure, no, you know, you're fine. You're fine. we will tell them, you know, keep a spare set of keys hidden someplace because that's part of the power and control of that abusive partners. They'll, hide the keys or keep keys because it, it's all about control. They won't Keeping, let them in their own house. That's right. Well, won't let them out of the house. Oh. So they'll take the car keys and hide them. So, you know, if he's not there, oh, wow. she can't leave. Um, you know, so it's... I never, I never thought of that. Goodness. That's right. That's right. Uh, you know, wow. keep a copy. Start gathering copies of all your important documents, birth certificates, social security right. cards, S- all of those stuff things. Stuff you don't really want to leave behind. That's right. Because right. If, you're, if you're leaving at the spur of the moment you don't have time to wander around and gather those things. So it's, you know, we try to help them plan for that. Think about those things that you're going to need, try to keep them in a safe place, have a, have a place where you know you can go to make that phone call, have a friend who is on standby, Uh, you know, any, and it's, it's individualized. The situation is different for every single person. Sure. It's not cookie Um, cutter. That's exactly right. right. That's right. right. But it's really trying to help them, make the best decisions to get out as safely as possible. Now you talked about the, the 24 seven helpline. What do we have that number? We do. We do. It's seven zero six three eight seven zero one hundred. 800 Folks, we're going to give that out uh, a few more times before we get out of here. Uh, and that's 24 seven manned 24 seven. That's exactly They're going right. to talk to a person. A person, yes. A who person actually who cares was, about them. That's right. And it's a person who was sitting in our shelter um, oh, are they? Uh, sitting in our shelter. Relatively who works local. With our, yes, that's right. It's not a call center that's off somewhere. This that's is, what I was getting at. Yes. Yeah. Um, so if, if the the person on the, you know, the caller on that line calls into our shelter, that advocate ends up bringing them to our shelter, it's that, that same woman who's going to greet them when they walk through the door. Oh, wow. So that's they've, they've like formed a relationship. Almost. That's right. That's right. And so they've begun a relationship over the phone and then are welcomed in once they, once they arrive. Now, having that relationship builds, builds trust. That's right. That's this, right. this could be a, a huge pivotal, pivotal time of their life if yes. they're leaving a situation. That, that's exactly right. And that's what it is intended to be. Right. Um, you know, it's really to – our goal is to empower – these victims so that they can, once they leave us, they live lives that are independent. They go forward and not back. That's exactly right. Because statistics say that a woman will return seven times to her abusive partner before she finally leaves for good or ends up dead. I was about to say, then she leaves for good. Right. Wow. Right. Well, does having children, does that intensify that going back? It does. The guilt or, or, oh, I didn't, I said that wrong. Uh, maybe a partner putting guilt upon them because there's children involved. That's exactly right. Yes. Oh, wow. Um, and, and guilt is a huge part of it. You know, guilt and or shame. Being, being guilted. That's exactly right. That's what yes. I meant to say. I yes. forgive me there. No, 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 no. There's, you know, there are no wrong. There are no wrong words. Um, you know, and all of those um, emotions are true. These these women feel guilt. They don't. They shouldn't. Right. Um, they haven't right. done anything wrong, but. Particularly, you know, as, as mothers, we take responsibility for, mm-hmm. for our kids and for how they feel and what happens to them. And so a lot of times we assume blame and guilt that isn't ours to hold. Right. And a lot, of, a lot of our ladies are in that exact position. Um, and you're right, the, that abusive partner imposes that. They use that. that. That's, that's part of the power and control. The control. That's right. It's making making her feel guilty. You know, you're taking my kids away from right. from me. Um, well, you of know, course, and, it's all your fault. Uh, of, of course, of course, of course, wow. because it's it's manipulation. Um, yes, but that's getting those children out of that situation. Um, it, it's just as important for the kids as it is for for mom because those kids are growing up in that. And as much as those parents think that they're Shielding their kids from the abuse, they aren't. Yeah, yeah. The children at all ages pick up a lot more than we give them credit for. That's right. Um, I know people who grew up in in very uh, volatile, uh, hostile environments with their parents, and you would be shocked what carries over. You'd be very shocked. But all right, moving on. So moving on from that, uh, 
abusive relationships in general, though, do they do they start out that way? Are are there are there warning signs? Does someone just and this I'm probably going down roads we shouldn't go, but does someone just wake up one morning? They don't just they don't just wake up one morning and they're abusive. No, no, no. Of course not. It just gets worse. That's right. Um, you know, and it's a. It works in a cycle. You know, it gradually intensifies. You know, I say a lot of times, it's not like you say, I do on Saturday, and you wake up on Sunday, and right. he's knocking you around. Right. You know, it right. it starts off, there are certainly warning signs. Okay. Um, you know, it starts off with, with signs of control. You know, if, if a relationship appears to be too good to be true, probably is. It, it probably is. You know, right. if it's excessive gifts or he wants to spend all of his time with you. You know, right. he, he doesn't want you spending time with your friends or your family. You know, why do you have to go out for girls night? What's, why can't you just stay home with me? I want to spend time with you. Right. That's a warning sign. Um, you know, if you're not allowed to be your, your own person, it's just leading into control. Are they projecting their own insecurities? Do you think by doing that? A you lot you of need times. to be with me all the time. Don't, sure, don't, sure. We don't need to go see your parents. Right. That's right. That's right. And, you know, if, that way nobody else knows what's going on because there's the danger that somebody else will recognize those warning signs. Right. If, if you never get to see anybody else, then you come under complete control of that other individual. Right, right. Um, you know, and it grows to, well, you don't really need to work. You know, I can take care of us, right. or you need to stay home with the kids. So then you don't have any access to money. You don't have any – he gradually gradually takes away her independence until she does become completely dependent on him. Right. And it, tur- you know, it grows into emotional abuse, criticism, uh, you know, those kinds of things. And then it, it progresses. It, it's a gradual progression until it gets to the, the physical abuse. I, I got you. I got you. I got you. Give, give me that phone number again. Seriously, folks, for those who, who are listening, if, if you need help, or maybe you know someone who is, and we'll talk, Tracy and I will talk about this a little bit more. If you know, need, if you know someone who needs some help, Tracy, what's that, that hotline number again? 706-387-0100. Now, what I just said about you, you know someone, maybe it's a relative, might be a neighbor, you know someone. Uh, who who is suffering? It's obvious, but they're too scared to call a hotline number like yours. Can that person step in? Is it, it, how would that work? I mean that that's a that's a very I'm sure a very delicate line, delicate balance there. It is. Um, you start accusing people, people get in trouble. That's very true. Yeah. Um, and you know that that victim has to do it in her own time. You know, she right. she's not she has to make the decision when it's time to go. Of course. Um, you know, we we want what's best for those that we love and a lot mm-hmm. of times we in the interest of what we think is their best interest trying to help them, we push them too hard. I could see that. Um, I could definitely see that. Right. And we have that sometimes, you know, family members will call and say, "Well, I just need her to do this and I just need her to come in," but at the end of the day, the decision is hers, it's up and to her. you can't you can't force her. And until she's ready, she's not going to she's not going to heal, and she's not going to progress, and she's not going to escape that cycle of. She's going to go back. That's right. And she, make the, she will make go the situation back. ultimately worse. That's right, because it's hard. It is. Oh, it I can is imagine. Such a hard journey for that victim to essentially start her life completely over again. Yeah. yeah. And to start that process, she has to be fully committed. Right. Nobody else can do that for her. I got you. I got you. So I, I guess a friend's family, they can just share information. That's right. That's right. And encourage and support. Um, believe her when she finally does decide to, to yeah. tell. Yeah. Um, because that's a big part of this cycle is that folks don't don't believe victims. Because it's a... It's a hidden, it's a hidden epidemic. People don't see it. You know, those abusers right. are, right. they're charming. You know, they're, they're manipulative. And so, you know, they're, they're the guy who sits next to you in church or, you know, at the little league game. He's the, you know, he's the coach on the right. sideline. Everybody loves him. Um, everybody loves him. And wow. so when the wife, you know, says, my husband's beating me, they're like, oh, no, 
couldn't be him. He would you, never do that. You're exaggerating. It, right, right. Um, but, you know, nobody nobody wants to admit that. It's, it's shameful and embarrassing for that woman to admit that, that this is happening. Because in her mind, she thinks, I'm allowing this to happen to myself. Exactly. exactly. Um, and so it, it takes an amazing amount of courage just to say it out loud, to admit it to somebody else, right. and right. to ask for help. Right. And so if you take that step and ask for help and you get rejection and disbelief, you're never going to do that. Especially again. for someone you should be able to trust. That's right. A relative, a close friend, or right. someone you perceive as a close friend. Right. Yeah, I could I could see that. And, and then, wow. And then if it gets out and people don't believe you, wow, it, it compounds quickly. We talked briefly. We mentioned the kids, bringing the kids into it and the kids into it. How does the domestic abuse affect the kids? Uh, are, are these children in these in, stuck in these situations? No fault of their own. Do they are they looking at a life of of, of going down similar paths, maybe uh, more uh, having just a difficult life ahead of them? Oh yes. I mean, oh yes. Is there work to be done with the children? There is work to be done with the the children. Um, boys who grow up. In homes. That's heartbreaking, Trey. It, 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 it is. It is. It's heartbreaking. It's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. Boys who, who grow up in homes with domestic violence are 50% more likely to become abusers themselves in adulthood. Gotcha. And girls are almost certain to become victims. I was about to say, they, they accept it. Uh, they accept it. Because mom did. Because it's their normal. This is, right. this is what they grow up with, so they think this is normal. Those kids who... who live in this violence they have problems in school that they um, have behavior issues they wet the bed they have learning difficulties um, they have trouble uh, in society um, assimilating more, being part of that's society. right they have more likely they're more likely to have anxiety and depression um, these are these are consequences that affect them for the rest of, mm -hmm. of their lives. It's not just, it's not just in the moment. Right. Um, and so we have a child advocate who works closely with our kids. I was about to ask you. We do, um, that works closely with our kids. We try to connect our, our moms and our kids with, um, with therapy resources for those who are, who are interested in that. Um, you know, the, the positive part about this is yeah. that these kids who do come out of these abusive homes, all it really takes is one positive adult, one positive relationship with an adult to turn that around for a, them. A true mentor. That's right. A, po a positive mentor. Right. And it doesn't have to even be at least – at least studies say that it doesn't have to be for a very long term. It can be a relatively short period of time if they just have a positive experience with an adult. Now, do you have a mentor program? You, you align these children? We, we do not have a mentor program per se. But you know where there's some. That's right. So all of our school systems have mentor programs. Right. So, which is, you know... Fabulous, and so we can connect our kids with mentors in their schools. Um, and like I said, we have our, our child advocate who works closely with them. We have support groups for our kids, as well as as well as adults. But we have age appropriate support groups, so they, you know, can have those experiences with kids who are in similar situations. I got you. Um, I got you. So you're you're ultimately breaking the cycle because those children are going to grow up, commit the same things, whether, uh, you know, for or against, they're going to, wow, so you're breaking the cycle. Right, and that, that's it our It really starts with goal. the children as much as anything. That's right. Correct? That's right. It, it, it starts with the kids. Um, we have very strong programs for our kids and our youth and our teens. Uh, we have a, a team program. We... Of course, we, we do the work directly with our survivors, and, but we also focus on educating the, the community. We want everybody to, to, to know um, so that they don't end up in these relationships. Right. We have a teen advocate who goes out and speaks to, to schools, to youth groups, to boys and girls clubs, you know, different youth organizations, teaching them about healthy relationships. 
We start with the younger kids, you right, know, and, right. and teach them what a healthy relationship looks like, how you should treat your friends, because that's where it starts. You know, if you treat your friends well, you're more likely to treat your dating partners well. Mm -hmm. Then as they get older, you know, and more into the high school years, then we can talk a little bit about teen dating violence, right. because it, it's such it's such an epidemic now. Um, we see so many teenagers who have violent dating relationships. One in five, one in five teenagers, wow, one in five will wow. experience extreme dating violence. Wow. And the problem is that these kids don't tell. They don't tell their parents. They don't tell anybody what's happening. But half of those kids end up attempting suicide. Oh, I hadn't even thought of that. Goodness, goodness. And those committing the atrocities, they just don't know any better. Most of the time, no. I mean, most of the that's time, what, they, they're patterning yeah, behavior that they've, they've seen, learned at home. they've been around. That's right. That's wow. right. Um, Which doesn't make it better. But no. Any stretch. No, I'm not it, trying to say it does, but it, it they, certainly they, they, they honestly don't realize. It's their um, normal. Right. Right. So there's, a, there's a big cycle to break. That's right. And, you know, if you can reach them in their youth... There's still time to turn them right, around. Right. So these these presentations and interactions and conversations that our teen advocate has with these kids, it's not just directed towards the victims. It's directed towards those the, abusers the, as well. The aggressor. Right. The because aggressor. healthy relationships work both ways. Uh, you know, how you treat others as well as how you expect to be treated. I got you. I got you. So, so, so a woman looking for help to get away. She, she has children, so the children are involved. I don't want to say that nothing is automatic, but that, that is how you're getting a hold of these children through, through that same process. That's right. So, so moms out there, it, it may be difficult to do, but you, you're really doing it for your kids as much as anything. That's right. Um, you know, and we, many of us who, who grew up in, an earlier time, you know, is you always stay. You know, you stay. For I know the kids. I'm old. You stay for I the know kids. I'm right. old. Yeah. Well, you know, my my mother was like that. Right. You stay for the kids. That's right. Um, when in reality, that's the worst possible thing you can do for the kids. Keeping the kids in a violent home does not benefit the children. Uh, the best thing you can do for those kids is to to get yourself and those kids to safety. Right. Not just physical safety, but emotional and psychological mm -hmm. safety. Uh, you know, particularly for those kids, they might not be the, the the victims of physical violence by that other abusive parent, but they are certainly experiencing the emotional and psychological violence. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I, I, no, I'm, I'm with you on all this. Give the uh, the hotline number again. This is important, folks. 706-387-0100. That's pretty easy to remember. Right. I'm with you. Tracy, you're awesome. You've got a website. We do. Peace Place Incorporated. No, no, no. Peaceplaceinc.org. Right. Peace Place. Peace with an E A. Peaceplaceinc.org. But you also have a thrift store. We do. And we we are not ending this show ever on a negative note. We're talking about escaping violence. We're going to talk about something cool before we get off here. You have a thrift store. You got some cool stuff in there. We do. Our thrift nice, store. Nice, nice furniture. Awesome. Yes. Nice. I, 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 I see you on Facebook. You got some nice stuff in there. <laughs> we have great stuff in there. Um, and every penny that that thrift store makes directly funds our programs. Nice. Uh, we, are, we are very blessed to, to own and operate this, this store um, mm -hmm. that does so much for us. How do you get some of this stuff? You just know a ton of people. It's all, yes. It's so all donation? It's all donations. Every single thing in that store is a donated item our community is absolutely amazing it's pretty good ain't it? it it yes yeah. yes um we are so blessed to to live here mm -hmm. um we mm -hmm. and we accept donations wednesdays and saturdays 10 to 4 that's it just two days a two week Two days a week because we receive such a volume that oh, it wow. takes them that long to process nice. um and our guys will go out and pick up large uh, donations of furniture and things you. on you other guys days. That pick stuff up. That's right. Okay. Um, so you know the fact that 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 huge 
warehouse is full of nothing but donated items. Now, where's, just, where's this warehouse at? We, uh, the address is 339 Highway 82 South in Jefferson. That could be anywhere in the right. world. Right. So, right. So I will, um, that's for those who might want to put it in a GPS. That's true. But that's true. if you, uh, if you're heading towards Athens down the, um, bypass right. down, um, Business 129, I guess is what it's technically called. Bypass. Yeah, right. Yeah, bypass. Um, it's on the. It's in Arcade on the right hand side of the the road, um, next to a Dollar General across the street from the Catered Kitchen and Two Fox Farm. Right. Right. Yes, a little plug there for for my buds there at the the Catered Kitchen. They're pretty kitchen. cool. Pretty <laughs> cool place. Pretty cool place. I've been there. I've been there. You're on Facebook, Peace Place in Corp, uh, Inc. Peace. Peace Place Inc. I'll stop saying incorporate by the time we finish. <laughs> and then on Instagram as well, Peace Place Inc. Uh, if if people want to make donations though, how do they how do they do that? Um, they, they they just show up at your door. They've got some furniture they want you to pick up. Oh, absolutely. Are we opening so, up a can of worms there? Oh, well, so it depends on what kind of donation they want to make because we can accommodate every single one of them. Now, do you take cash donations? Well, okay, of course. Okay. Um, I wasn't going that way. I saw the smile yes. on your face. Well, so, you need that too. Right. Yes, of You're course. You're a C3, correct? That's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Um, check, cash, Venmo, PayPal, you Venmo. credit card. Oh, we Venmo. See, we're, we're really you. up to these you. days. I we have Venmo. You. I hear you. Um, right. And of course, we, we accept donations at our thrift store as well. Okay. Okay. That's very, that's very important. Peaceplaceinc.org. Folks, check it out. Tracy, thank you so much for coming in. Oh, thank you for Was having me. Was there anything I missed, something that you really needed to say? And I breezed over it. If I did, I apologize. Uh, no, no, no. You know, you, you made a point that we, um, you know, never wanted to end on a negative note. We and don't. we talked a lot about violence. But, um, you know, these the stories of these ladies are and these kids are, yeah. are pretty amazing. Um, and they start off in a really bad place, in a, a place of... Uh, obviously violence and trauma, but they end in, in a whole new, in a whole new light and a light of independence and empowerment awesome. and, and nothing but love and positivity. That's so good. That's good to hear. there is, there's hope, there's light at the end of the tunnel. So it's not, it might start off negative, but it surely doesn't end that way. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Well, great job. And thank you for everything you're doing for the community. Well, thank you. Thank and you. Thanks for, for being me. here. I appreciate it. That's my music. That means I have to leave. Folks, thank you so much. Hey, this was a great episode. Listen to it again. Listen to it a few times. And if you're out there and you need help, you now know where to go. I'm Tom Sheldon. Talk to you soon.